Hi there, Jason here from Meridio. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Meridio's MS Test Pro to test this HDBase-T AV system for compliance and functionality. First, I'll test the HDBase-T cable itself. We will look at how to test the general link quality and the DC resistance of the cable to ensure that the cable is not going to have any problems providing power from the transmitter over to the receiver on the other side of the room that's connected to a TV. I'll also test the HDMI cables for bandwidth and functionality. By performing these tests, I can guarantee that all the cables in the system work. All of these tests can be documented and turned into a report to give you and your client the peace of mind that the infrastructure of this system is functional. Let's get started. Before we get too deep into the video, let's do a quick rundown of the signal chain that we're going to test today. First, we have our two sources, which is a Roku and a Blu-ray player. Those are connected to two Meridio confidence monitors. Then the output from the confidence monitors are connected to a 16x16 matrix switch, also with HDMI. The output of the matrix switch is HDBase-T, and in this case, for the test, the other end of the HDBase-T cable is connected to an HDBase-T receiver. That HDBase-T receiver is then connected to a Samsung display with an HDMI cable. The first thing that we're going to do is take the transmitter module and install it into the MS Test Pro to the bottom slot. Then we'll take the receiver module and install the POH adapter on the end. Next I'm going to take the HDBase-T cable, we're going to take it out of the matrix switch. Once the HDBase-T cable is unplugged from the matrix switch, we'll go ahead and plug that into the transmitter module that's currently installed into the MS Test Pro. Then the other end of the HDBase-T cable is going to plug into the receiver module. Now we'll take the MS Test Pro, go ahead and turn on the main power switch. Now that the MS Test Pro is fully powered up, we're going to choose the HDBase-T analyzer and go into basic analysis. The general link quality has two green bars, so that's a good indicator that the HDBase-T cable and the terminations are good to go. We can also see there's green bars on the transmitter, green bars on the receiver, what type of chip is in the transmitter and receiver, how long the cable is, and other vital information. Next, we'll take a look at the performance menu. If you notice, there's two selections on the left for the transmitter and two selections on the right for the receiver. We'll start with the transmitter. So this shows us that the maximum error for the transmitter is well within the green tolerances here. If we were touching this orange line or the red line, we know there might be a problem on the transmitter side. We can also click just below that and see the average error on the transmitter side. Again, here we're well within the tolerances, everything's green, everything looks good. We can also look at the max error on the RX end. We have all green lines here, nothing near the orange or the red. And if we look at the average error on the receiver end, same thing, we've got all green lines here, nothing's near the orange and the red. So in this case, as far as transmitting a signal, we know that this cable is good. If you want to see more of what's happening on the transmitter and receiver side, go ahead and check out the configuration menu. Here you can see the HDBase-T firmware version, what type of chip is in the transmitter or receiver, how long the cable is, and other vital information. Now that we know that the cable is passing a signal no problem, now we should check it for DC resistance to make sure there's no issues with power interfering with the cable or the signal. Before we swap out modules, don't forget to always power the unit off before swapping out modules. So tap the power button in the bottom corner, and then tap yes. Once the screen turns white, you can go ahead and turn off the main power on the rocker switch. Now that the MS Test Pro is powered down, we can go ahead and swap out the transmitter module for the DC resistance module. Now take the HDBase-T cable that you want to test and plug it into the DC resistance module. The other end of the cable should plug into the looper module. Now that the HDBase T cable is connected between the DCR module and the looper on the other end, the unit's now powered up. We're going to go into the tools menu, and then in the bottom right corner, we're going to choose DCR DC resistance. Now, if you notice on the loop resistance, pairs A, B, C, and D are all well with under 20 ohms, which is the goal. So we have four green check marks here. Next, we'll look at the parallel DC resistance unbalanced. Again, we want the readings here to be under 20 ohms for pair A, B, C, and D. That all looks great. Next, we'll look at the pair-to-pair -pair resistance unbalanced. For this test, we want each pair to be under 0.2 ohms. 
And in this case, we're right at 0 0.02, or in some cases, zero. So we have all check marks here that are in green. So we know that this cable is passing signal and it doesn't have any issues with power. Now, if I want to, I can save this information, download it to a thumb drive. Now I can give that PDF file to my client, showing them that the cable passes all the tests. Now that the HDMI-T cable is tested, let's go ahead and test the HDMI cables that are in the system. For this demonstration, we're just gonna test two HDMI cables. One that's going from the source into the matrix switch and one that's coming out of the receiver into the television. The two modules we're gonna use for this are the HDMI cable test module and the looper. Right now, the MS Test Pro is powered off, so it's safe to go ahead and swap the modules out, take out the DC resistance module, and install the HDMI cable test module. Now we can take the HDMI cable that we wanna test, we plug one end into the looper module, We'll plug the other end into the HDMI cable test module. Then we can go ahead and power the unit up. Now that the HDMI cable is plugged into the HDMI cable test module and the other end is plugged into the looper, we can go ahead and jump into the tools menu. And then in the bottom right corner, we can choose HDMI cable tester. Now there's two tests that you can run, the compatibility test and the sweep test. If you run both tests at the same time, you can turn those test results into a PDF showing the customer that the cable itself has been tested and it will not fail. So first we'll pick the compatibility and then the sweep test. And then we'll click run. Now in this case, it shows that the 4K60444 signal at 18 gigabits per second has failed. The 4K30420, which is nine gigs has passed and the 4.45 gig 1080p test has also passed. The unit did not detect any shorted HDMI wires, and in the sweep test, it did confirm that all of the wires were okay. Now, because this cable did not pass at 18 gigabits per second, I will wanna swap that cable out for one that can. Now, if I wanna save and document these results, I can press save. The unit will put those test results on a PDF file, which I can then later get that PDF file from the thumb drive to a PC. Now we'll go ahead and test the second HDMI cable that's in the system. The cable's already been connected from the HDMI cable test module and then to the looper on the other end. So now we can go into the tools menu, select the HDMI cable tester, run the compatibility and the sweep test, choose those two and click run. Now this HDMI cable did pass all the tests. It passed to 18 gigs, nine, 4.45, no HDMI wires inside the cable are shorted, and the test results from the sweep test show not detected, meaning that all the cables are there and connected and good to go. Now all I have to do is replace that first cable that we tested with one that does pass. If I wanna save the results from this test, I can do the same thing as we did before. Click save. The unit will generate this data into a PDF file. Then you can print out that PDF file if you'd like, or email it to your customer to show them that the HDMI cables all pass. Now that we know that the HDMI T link between the rack and the TV is good to go, and now we found two HDMI cables that we know are passing all the tests, the last thing that we'll look at for this exercise is testing an HDMI T transmitter and receiver to make sure that they're functioning properly. Now the last thing that we'll look at here is this HDMI T receiver, and we also have a transmitter. We want to test these for functionality and to make sure that they're passing the proper signal to the monitor. The monitor I'm using in this case is the Meridio single monitor, which I like to use because it does have some analyzer function built into it. So as long as the signal that's coming out of the MS Test Pro is the same signal that's making it to the monitor, we know that the system is good to go. This also, of course, could be one of the displays that's in the system. Now, before we run this test, just keep in mind that in this case, we do have to power the receiver with its own power supply. Then with the HDMI-T link, we're gonna connect it to the receiver and we'll connect the other end to the transmitter, which is installed into the MS Test Pro. Then we're gonna take a known good tested HDMI cable. We're gonna plug it into the side of the MS Test Pro because we will be using the MS Test Pro as a signal generator. The other end of the HDMI cable is gonna plug into the input on the transmitter. Now we already have the HDMI-T cable connected from the transmitter to the receiver. Now we just have to take another known good tested HDMI cable, plug it in from the receiver into the test monitor or into the TV. So just to recap, we have HDMI going from the generator to the module, an HDMI-T cable going from the transmitter module to the HDMI-T receiver, 
and then another HDMI cable from the HD Base T receiver into the monitor. Now we can go ahead and power the unit up. Now that the unit's powered up, we can see that there's a test pattern making its way to the monitor. This tells us that there is a signal getting from the generator into the transmitter, out of the transmitter, into the receiver, and then out of the receiver into the test monitor. If you want to take this testing a little bit further and test for different formats and resolutions, go ahead and tap the Tools button. Then select the HDMI generator, and then we can select specific resolutions and frame rates and test patterns. So for example, if I wanted to test the system for 4K30, I would pick 4K resolution, 30 on the refresh rate, and then any number of test patterns I can choose down here is no problem. I'm just going to pick the Simpty color bars, and then we're going to click Apply. The way I have this unit set right now, the test pattern is going to stay on the screen for 20 seconds. You can adjust this if you'd like to. Now that we see the color bars on the other end, we know that this system can now pass 4K30 with no problems. Now we're going to test the HD Base T transmitter to make sure that it's operating properly and passing all the signals that you'd like it to. Once again, like when we tested the receiver before, we do want to make sure that the HD Base T transmitter is powered by its own power supply. Then we're going to take the HD Base T receiver module and install it into the MS Test Pro. Next, we'll take the HD Base T cable. We're going to plug it in to this transmitter and then plug the other end into the receiver module. Then we'll take an HDMI cable. If you're using the MS Test Pro as a signal generator, we'll take the other end of the HDMI cable and we're going to plug it into the HDMI input on the transmitter. Then we'll take one more HDMI cable. We're going to plug it into the HDMI output on the receiver module and then to the input on the test monitor or the display that's in the system. So just to recap, we have our source, which is the MS Test Pro using as an HDMI generator, into the transmitter. The transmitter is connected to the receiver module with the HD Base T cable. And then there's an HDMI cable coming out of the receiver module into the display. Once you have everything wired up, go ahead and power the unit on. Now that the unit's powered back up, we see a test pattern on the screen just like we did earlier when we were testing the HD Base T receiver. So this is a good sign. This shows us that there's signal coming through the system and then into the display. Now just like before, if I wanted to go a little bit further and test for different resolutions and formats, we'll hop into the tools menu and then HDMI generator. And just like before, we can pick the resolution, the frame rate, and whichever test pattern we want. Then click apply. We have a test pattern on the other screen here. Again, it'll stay up for 20 seconds or longer, depending on how you set the unit. We now know that the HD Base T transmitter and the HD Base T receiver and the HD Base T link cable and the two HDMI cables are, have all been tested. They're all good to go. This can all be documented. Now you can confidently install everything that you see here, knowing that you're not going to have any issues. For the rest of the system, you would just simply repeat what we've just done, testing the rest of the lines, testing the rest of the HDMI cables, and testing any other transmitters or extenders that might be in the system. Once everything has been tested and documented, you now know that the system is going to work properly. The documentation will give you confidence and give your customer confidence that all the cables are operating correctly and passing the signals that you'd like them to pass. Thank you for watching this training module on the MS Test Pro. Hopefully this tool will make your life much easier when dealing with HD Base T products. Keep in mind that the MS Test Pro is designed to tell you what's wrong with the system, not necessarily how to fix it. That comes with knowledge and experience, but one document that you can always refer to is the HD Base T 10 Commandments. These are helpful and simple tips that can help you with setting up, installing, and troubleshooting any AV system. See you next time.